Hello everyone. Today we will discuss the Windows logon process. What happens at the back end when we enter the credentials? Today we will be discussing the logon process of a local user account. However, in future we will have a separate presentation for domain user accounts. So we will start the process from the point where the boot process is complete and the user side processes are being created. So once the boot process is completed, the processes on the user side of the architecture are started. The first process to start is smss.exe. The smss.exe stands for Session Manager Subsystem. This is the Session Manager, the first user mode process and is created by the kernel itself. It starts both the kernel side and the user side of the Win32 subsystem. Its job is to create the new sessions. So initially, it creates two sessions, the session 0 and session 1. Session 0 is for the operating system processes and session 1 is for the user processes. In session 0, two processes, csrss.exe for the kernel side and wininit.exe are started. In session one, csrss.exe for the user side and winlogon.exe are initiated. Don't worry about these acronyms yet. We will go through these shortly. Only one instance of smss.exe should be present at any point in time. It is further responsible for creating environment variables, virtual memory, and some other necessary operations which will, we will not discuss here. So csrss.exe is the second process to start, which is the child process of smss.exe. It stands for the client server runtime subsystem. It runs as a user mode system service. It is important process for the management of the processes and threads. So whenever a process on the user mode side calls a function for process creation or a thread creation. The CSRSS process does most of the actual work by sending the instructions to other parts of the system to create a new process using inter-processes calls. In the task manager, you should have only two instances of this process. The third process that we are going to discuss briefly is winInit.exe. It stands for Windows Initialization Process. It is responsible for initialization of Windows and starts three processes named services.exe, lsas.exe, and lsm.exe. Since the presentation is related to Windows logon process, we will dig a bit deeper for the lsas process. It stands for the local authority subsystem service. This is a very critical process and is most often the target of different malwares and adversaries. It is responsible for local security policy for managing the users allowed to log in. It also writes logs in the security events and generates security tokens. There should only be one instance of LSAS to RTXE. Malware authors often disguise the malicious binaries with similar spellings to lsas.exe. So it must have only one instance at any given time. So winlogon.exe, this is another important process in terms of the user's logons. It is responsible for handling interactive logons to a Windows system, either remote or local. It is responsible for responding to the secure attention sequence, loading the user profile on logon, and optionally locking the computer when a screensaver is running. So it creates three secure desktops, which includes secure desktop, which is the default desktop and is shown right after the, after the operating system is initialized. It also gets activated when the secure authentication sequence is pressed it is a special key or a combination of keys to be pressed on the system before a login screen can be presented to the user. By default, usually it is the Control-Alt-Delete. 
The second desktop is the user desktop, which is an interactive session. Uh, when the user interactive session is created, it is the normal desktop after a user logs onto the desktop. The third one is the screen saver desktop. When screen saver is activated due to any reason, for example, it could be due to the inactivity. So when a winlogon.exe receives the combination from the user, like the username and the password, or sorry, the secure authentication sequence, it activates the secure desktop for user to enter the password. Then there are other processes that are also linked with the winlogon.exe, such as logon user UI.exe. This is responsible for collecting the credentials, username and password from the user, user init.exe, which is, as the name suggests, initializes the user profile and uh, creates the explorer.exe. And the last one is the explorer.exe, which is, which is the Windows Explorer. One last building block, which I would like to discuss before we dive deep into the logon steps is the ALPC, asynchronous local inter-process communication, which is a way for processes to communicate to each other within the same host. So for example, during logon, when the winlogon.exe and the lsas.exe have to communicate with each other, they use the ALPC. LSAS has a specific LSA authentication port registered for all kinds of ALPC communications. <clears throat> so at this stage, we have the winlogon.exe started. LSAS.exe is also running and a secure desktop has been open. So let us start diving into the logon process. A user sits on the system and hits the secure authentication key, which is usually a combination of control or delete. WinLogon creates another process, logon UI.exe. <clears throat> As we just shortly discussed before, that the log logon UI.exe's only purpose is to get the credentials from user and then it terminates itself. Logon UI.exe is invoked by the winlogon.exe whenever authentication data needs to be collected. So once the logon UI.exe has collected the credentials from the user, the winlogon.exe uses the LSA logon user function to pass the authentication data to LSAS. The LSA logon user function uses the LSA authentication port, which is registered LS SAS ALPC port for communication. Now, the credentials are already with the LSAS. Here, the LSA server <clears throat> decides what to do with these credentials based on the user account type. For instance, if, <clears throat> if it is a local account or a domain account, in this scenario, we will be discussing the local user account, so it will be authenticated using the SAM, which is a security account manager. Now, before we proceed further, there are some concepts we would like to clarify for better understanding. Without getting into the details, SSP, the security service provider, is a piece of code which contains the implementation of different authentication protocols. For example, MSV1 underscore zero is an MSS sorry, is an SSP, which we will see shortly, which contains the several authentication protocols such as LM, NTLM, and NTLM version two. Another one is the authentication package. It is a DLL that contains the authentication protocols belonging to the specific authentication protocol family. As we discussed, MSV1 underscore zero is an authentication package family and has several authentication protocols implementation Yes, it is also an SSP and it performs authentication using the local security account, that is the SAM, Security Account Manager. Now, LSAS server, server has to decide which authentication packet is to be used for authenticating the user who sent me the credentials. It will select between the Kerberos or MSV1 underscore zero Currently, since we are discussing the scenario of a local user account, we will select msv1 underscore zero. 
after msv1 underscore zero receives the user's credentials it generates a hash of the user's password and sends a request to a security account manager for credentials verification the sam extract this information from the sam database where all the local user account is stored and sends this information back to lss so what is sam database anyway well it contains the information related to a local user account on the system for example local group memberships account password hashes and some other settings so when log on uh, so so msv1 underscore zero has a hash from the sam manager it compares it with the hash generated from the user supplied credentials if both hashes are the same and the user logon writes are correct the logon type requested is allowed it creates a unique identifier called logon id which uniquely identifies a session within a host this information is then passed to lss process and used to create a security token for that particular session that has been created and then this whole information after being generated it's sent back to the bin logon with a successful logon status so when when logon receives a success message from the lsas for the authentication request it sent before it creates a process called user init.exe it is the first program that runs with the user credentials it is responsible to load the user profile and then creates the explorer.exe at this stage the user logon has been successful and the explorer.exe is the windows explorer process which displays the gui graphical user interface to the user this completes the windows logon process and all the internal processes that we discussed after that any logon any logged on user will just normally use the windows operating system the way he wants or whatever forever whatever purpose it is using i hope that it was informative for you and remember the microsoft keeps changing and updating their software so for the latest information always consult the microsoft documentation if it is available of course and if there is any other topic you would be very interested in do let us know in your comments and we would be happy to make a presentation for that thank you so much